Hi guys, welcome to the biology presentation for year 12 next year. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, this is obviously a little bit strange because normally we'd be doing a little bit of talking, a little bit of practical work um, to kind of give you a little bit of a flavour of what you'd be doing next year. But things as they are, um, we'll, we'll kind of run through the course and there's a couple of things for you to have a look at before uh, September. So without further ado, um, I'll be teaching a year 12 biology next year, um, so it will be me, uh, so some of you I'll know, some of you I won't, um, but I love biology, um, all aspects of biology, some more than others, but generally um, it's a brilliant subject and it will take you to a lot of different places. I've taught students who have gone on to do the classics like medicine, veterinary, um, others who have gone on to combine things like biology with photography and have been out to Hawaii and uh, done photography, nature photography out there. Um, I've studied with friends who have done uh, great things with genetics and things like that. So it it can take you a lot of different places, um, and it's a great subject to to learn. Okay. So we use OCR. Um, you can go to their website and download their course specification, or contact me, and I'll kind of point you in the right direction as to what you need to to do to get that. Um, but in essence. There are six modules split over the two year course for the A-level um, and um, I'll take you through what those modules are. So, first module is a practical one. Um, this isn't uh, examined per se, it's a um, set of practicals that you'll study over the two year course. So you need to complete a minimum of these 12 uh, exam set um, practicals. And they cover all sorts of things from chromatography to biological molecule testing um, to heart dissections, all sorts of different things um, as you go through the course. And we'll do those as you go through. And the, the key thing here is the development of practical skills. So you, you're not expected to be excellent at them all the way from the start. You will develop them and get better at them. So they will be set practicals throughout the year. Um, it is a pass or fail thing. So you don't, it's not coursework. You don't um, get a, a grade at the end of it, um, but the content of these practicals can then be uh, examined on in the actual exam itself. So they can base questions about it, and often um, two or more of these will come up um, as context for questions. So um, it's important that we do them, but also it's important that you develop this this practical nature uh, of biology. Okay, and something you can do at home while you are uh, sort of twiddling your thumbs at the moment, waiting for the August. Uh, grades to come in go at um, a dissection at home. So you can quite simply use a chopping board uh, that you might prepare food on, uh, a sharp knife uh, and maybe some gloves if you're not um, overly keen on, on touching a dissection, but things you can easily get hold of to dissect and are really, really interesting to have a look at is the old classic like a chicken leg. Um, so a full leg and thigh and you can then peel back the skin uh, look at the muscle groups, the tendons, the ligaments, and particularly the joints as well. So you have the cartilage over the ball and socket joint at the top of the thigh, the knee joint as well. Um, and again, there's YouTube clips which you can kind of like help guide you through this. Um, the heart is another one. Uh, ones you get in the supermarket will be quite heavily trimmed. Uh, so the atria might be taken off the top, but there's still loads that you can sort of dissect and have a look at. And again, a heart dissection is one thing that you'll do for these controlled practicals. So again, having a practice of that before we get there will be really useful. OK, um, whole ungutted fish is a great dissection to do. And there's all sorts of things um, uh, and types and species of fish that you can get hold of. Might be a little bit difficult at the moment because um, I know some fishmongers in the supermarkets aren't um, operating. But as that becomes a little bit more available, maybe over the summer, it could be something that you can do. And also have a practice at your drawings as well. So as you're dissecting, maybe sort of do some drawing of what you're actually um, producing or, or dissecting, sorry, um, because then again, it develops that skill of drawing. And again, there's some great uh, links on YouTube and stuff like that, which will show you how to do scientific uh, dissection drawings, which will help you. OK, um, moving on. Uh, year 12 as a whole will generally start with a maths module at the beginning, which will just go through basic math skills. I know a lot of you will be pretty good with your maths, um, but again, there's a lot of maths content within the year 12 course, they say, or within the A-level itself, but they say with a minimum of sort of 20 to 25% maths. And that's not adding 
taking away multiplying it's complex math so using equations um, uh, standard form that kind of thing so we'll focus on doing some of the key skills of that so you've got a bit of a heads up about what's coming um, and um, then when we come to it in the context of the biological content you'll be a little bit familiar with it but after that we'll then get stuck into the biology itself so the first part is unsurprisingly foundations in biology so this is all stuff that you would have come across before but we're adding a lot of depth and detail to it so these common biological molecules a lot of biochemistry so don't forget all your chemistry you will still need to use some of that uh, when we come to do uh, the biological molecules and then we get into DNA its structure how it uh, kind of gets converted into proteins and all those kinds of things again how it links to enzymes and the importance of enzymes enzymes underlines everything in this course it's super important so again spend some time over the summer getting to grips with um, enzyme structure the lock and key theory maybe reading around it a little bit more um, biological membranes, hugely important. They control what goes in and out. And again, with the COVID-19 stuff, there's been loads of kind of like papers published by doctors and, and researchers on the ground uh, looking at how COVID infects our body and the membranes and the proteins embedded in that membrane is a key way of how it gets in and causes so much um, destruction in some cases. So again, we'll look at that um, structure. And again, you can start looking around that, particularly the research on the COVID-19 stuff. There's some really fascinating stuff out there as to how it um, interacts with our bodies and, and the potential long-term risks after having that infection. And then common stuff you've seen before. So cell division, again, more depth and detail, cell diversity, so specialized cells and stem cells, that kind of thing. So the module three looks at exchange and transport. So again, lots of familiar stuff in here. So lungs, hearts, uh, circulatory system. We'll go into lots more depth, a little bit more sports sciencey stuff um, with how the heart works, the cardiac cycle, breathing, gas exchange, um, and all that kind of thing. But also then in plants as well, because it's not just animal based. There's the plant side of things as well. So how do plants transport things? How do they? Um, get things around their, their their structures massively important um, module four is the last of the year 12 uh, and it covers a fairly broad breadth so here interestingly enough again we've got communicable diseases um, and the immune system so again with the covid19 my current year 12s kind of got to that unit just as the, the lockdown happened and so it was a really fascinating vehicle to kind of have a look at what was going on and then relate it back to the theory of how our body then tries to fight these things off and then the last is biodiversity, classification, evolution. So again, stuff you're familiar with from GCSE, um, looking at the, the diversity of organisms on our planet. I mean, there's just huge numbers of things that you can uh, study in, and look at in there, which is um, great. And then how we classify it. So how do we go about um, defining what a species is and whether one species is the same or it's different? Uh, and then the theories of evolution. So again, that stuff you've done on um, Darwin and, and his evolutionary theory will go into a little bit more depth and detail looking at not only his um, physical traits of classification but then where it's going in terms of DNA classification uh, and looking at that that kind of thing there. Um, um, the year 13 course then there's two key modules here again covering stuff that is familiar but in more depth so we've got communication, homeostasis and energy. So this is touching on respiration, photosynthesis. So that, that very fundamental um, two processes of, of how energy moves through our ecosystem, and how it's transferred from the sun and how it's then changed and the process by which it's, it's manufactured through um, living organisms. And then homeostasis, so how we control our internal environments um, using, again, hormones and enzymes to kind of do that. Um, and then the communication side. And one thing I, I find really fascinating here is the kind of nerves, the brain, um, how they kind of function, how they send signals, how different parts of the brain control our bodies and things like that. So a really uh, nice uh, unit to kind of get your teeth stuck into. There's loads in there. And then the last thing is the module six. So here we've got genetics, which can be a little bit more mathsy. Uh, so lots of equations and things like that in there. But again, looking at how genes interact uh, and why do we get um, different colored uh, organisms in terms of fur 
or eye colors and things like that? Why do uh, some parents pass on obvious genes and some don't? So we get into the nitty gritty of genetics a little bit. So you've done your Punnett squares at GCSE. We get into a little bit more interesting. So looking at where joint genes, um, so two genes may be inherited together. So what's the variation there? Or we look at um, epistasis, which is then how some genes um, have to have a control gene, which then causes certain things to be expressed or not. So again, really fascinating kind of stuff. And it'll kind of add a little bit more depth and understanding to your genetics that you've done so far. Um, and then evolution, so again, links with the um, Darwin stuff that came up earlier on, but again, looking at different ideas and theories of evolution, how that's kind of um, changed over time. Um, and then lastly, the, the ecosystem stuff. So again, uh, opportunities of field work here. So we try and go down the beach as much as we can, um, go out into the fields and, and try and do surveys um, and looking at, at how we can kind of look at biodiversity. How do we measure it? Um, how do we know if there's a link between a, um, environmental influence or whether it's um, something else that is influencing the growth of a, a species in a particular area? OK, and then also then where uh, biology is going in terms of the planet at the moment. So we're looking at the effects of climate change and the massive implications there. Um, what can we do? Is it too late? Um, can we change uh, the way that the government thinks about things, the policies that they're making? Um, is massively important. So again, it's another area where biology can kind of come in um, in a very different way in sort of like the politics um, side of um, biology as well, which is which is really fascinating. So um, that's the kind of course overview, the kind of content that you'll be covering. So a lot of it is familiar, as I say, but we're going to much more depth, much more detail. So um, something that, that people can find difficult about this is that um, that just the, the sheer volume of information that is involved here. So you need to sort of get hit the ground running and, and sort of do the wider reading, start reading ahead, go back to these kind of content uh, side of things that you've done in GCSE and really get to grips with them, be familiar with them. Um, so how is it assessed? Well, you'll sit three exam papers. Um, obviously, we've got the non-exam assessed um, practical side of things, which you'll do throughout the course. Um, but there are three papers. So papers one and two is broken down. So paper one covers modules one, two, three, and five. Um, it's a two and a quarter hour exam covering 37% uh, of your overall grade. And then paper two, again, another two and a quarter hours, um, which covers units one, two, four, and six. Um, and then lastly, paper three, the unified paper, which isn't quite as long. It's an hour and a half, 26% of the marks, but it covers everything. And it's looking at creating links um, and looking at your wider understanding. Can you jump from one topic to the next? And as we go through the course, I'll be encouraging you to do that as much as possible. Start creating these links as to what um, joins and, and jumps into a different unit. Um, but I'll explain more of that once we get started on the course. But that's that's what you're facing um, at the end of the, the two year course. Um, so from there, um, we will give you uh, a course book which looks similar to this um, it will cover all the content from year 12 and year 13 um, and I encourage you to bring that along it's a fairly hefty book to cart around so you can work it in pairs but you'll be given that um, there are other revision guides and maths help books which I will kind of introduce you to uh, in September so you can get hold of those I'd encourage you to use those um, again it just broadens um, the reading that you're getting your information from, which is hugely important. OK, um, so what do I expect from you? Um, so you will need a folder to record your um, notes in, um, not only your class notes, but then also your wider reading notes. Um, I'll talk about that more in a second. Um, you'll be given a practical lab book and a folder, which will give you a heads up on practical skills um, and how to do microscope drawings and then Within that will be a lab book where you'll record all your practical work. So you'll be given sheets which will be glued in and you'll do everything into that book and keep it in one place so that you will then have that to take away at the end of the two years before the exams as a sort of revision um, for you to use before the exams. OK, but make sure you've got folders, organize yourself and I'll talk about that again come September so you've got a better idea of what's going on there. OK. Um, homework wise, uh, you'll be set one homework a week um, and there'll be assessments as we go through. So as we complete a unit um, 
or a kind of chapter, then you'll be given a test on that. Again, you'll get feedback so you'll know where your strengths and weaknesses lie. And then that will be used as part of your homework to then go back to focus on the things that you didn't do so well. So a lot of ragging um, and a lot of focusing on, on progressing your understanding a lot more. Um, I tend to use Edmodo quite a lot. Uh, it's a bit like a Facebook um, uh, for education, if you like. So it's a good forum to kind of communicate. I can post stuff on there, like the, the PowerPoints that I use or any worksheets. So you, if you do miss stuff, that's the place to go and find it. Um, also, I'll put notes on there if um, there's things coming up um, that you might be interested in through universities, that side of things. OK. Um, Always have a go at your homework in advance. If you get stuck, then come and ask me, but don't just say, well, I, I couldn't do half of it. That's not a good excuse. You need to come and find me. We can sit down. I'm around in science generally at lunch times, after schools, and I'm more than happy to take you through stuff. I would say that's a massively important thing. If you do start to find that you're struggling with stuff, tackle it there and then. Don't wait um, for time to go on and we're on the, to a different topic before you then say, oh, actually, you know what, I'm really struggling with membrane stuff. Um, you'll find as we go on that foundations unit is hugely important. As the name suggests, it's everything that you study after that will be built on that unit. So you've got to get to grips with that and, and be confident with that. OK. Um, in terms of uh, materials and expectations, Edmodo, as I said, um, and I'll also post stuff on showing my homework. Um, no excuses um, for not handing homework in on time. And again, if you do have troubles or issues which is stopping you from doing that, then come and talk to me. Don't just not hand work in. All right, communication is a key thing. Um, in terms of the amount of time you should spend um, in and out of lessons, so for every hour you study in lessons, you should be spending at least another hour outside in your study periods um, in school or at home, going back through the content um, that we've covered in the lesson and also then maybe do some pre-reading for the lessons that are coming up. OK, again, it's it's prepping yourself so you're familiar with stuff before you then have to get to the nitty gritty of it. OK, uh, and that includes homework, uh, daily reviews, revision for mock exams, um, which I'll talk about in a second, um, and then pre-reading, as I say. OK, so just keep on top of things. Organisation is key here, not only of your notes, but also of your time. So stay on top. Um, mock exams, every half term, you will sit a mock exam and uh, that will be content that we've covered up to that point. So there'll be the first half term will be mainly maths focused, almost like a maths test, but with some biology focus to it. And then before Christmas, it will be more biology based. So those biological molecules, um, membranes, all those kind of foundational things. Um, and then every half term after that, as we get through the course, um, a mock exam is a really useful way of gauging progress as well as the end of chapter tests as well. OK. Um, absence. So again, please, if you know you're not going to be in a lesson for trips or things like that, then come and ask and I'll give you a heads up as to what we're covering. But again, I'll be posting stuff on Edmodo, so she, you should be able to catch up. But it is your responsibility to come and find me um, or to contact me. My current year 12 are pretty good at this. If they're away, often they'll just email and say, look, I'm not in today. Can you just um, ping me the work um, so I can catch up at home and keep on top of things there? So um, that's my email. If you've got any questions or queries or want a little bit more explanation about stuff or want to know where to find the specifications so you can start having a look through the content side of things, then ping me an email there. Um, I have put your summer work on Show My Homework. So you'll find if you go on there, there is Year 11 AS uh, Biology Prep Work. Um, you'll need to complete all of that for uh, before September. So between now and uh, over the summer holidays as well. So the earlier you get on top of that, the better. A lot of it is kind of like reviewing um, stuff you've done for GCSE. So again, keep using your Seneca logins. Keep going back through your revision notes that you've made uh, for your biology because it's all useful stuff. All the stuff that you'll do at A-level will be based on what you've covered at GCSE. So the more confident you are with your GCSE content, then the easier you're going to find um, the A-level. OK, so um, 
What I want you to do is pretty much this. It's the CGP uh, Head Start to A-Level Biology. Normally, I would issue uh, the book for you to take away. I think I gave some of the um, my year 11s um, in my set ones, some of these books to sort of like t take away with them. Um, but obviously, um, I can't do that. So I've scanned pretty much most of the pages. Um, so you can access those through Show My Homework and um, make sure you've got that done for September. Um, because again, if you don't, it's not starting the way you mean to go on. Okay. So again, if you can't see that or access it through Show My Homework, then send me an email and I will make sure you get that uh, to do. Okay. Uh, along with that, here are some um, sort of other things that you can do. Now, obviously, this doesn't cover content explicitly in the course, but again, it gets you thinking a little bit broader, a little bit wide, wider um, about the subject and the content. So here's some things that you might be able to get hold of. You might have a couple of these books kicking around at home. Um, you might be able to get these uh, films on Netflix or whatever the, uh, the platform is that you use. But these are just a, a, a small uh, selection of things that you could do. So Bill Bryson is brilliant. Um, this book, Short History of Nearly Everything, covers lots of different aspects, not only biology, but also physics and chemistry and stuff like that as well. It's a brilliant, brilliant book um, covering loads of fascinating stuff. Um, junk DNA. Again, our thinking of DNA and its structure and its purpose um, has changed quite dramatically over the last 20, 30 years. Um, and this is a brilliant book to kind of help you kind of dig a little bit deeper into the, to the world of genetics because it is a massive world. Uh, Frankenstein's cat um, again sort of looks at biotechnology and how we kind of are starting to use that and transfer genes um, and again in terms of coming up with vaccines and treatments for stuff like COVID and any other um, SARS based disease is going to sort of involve some element of biotechnology where we're moving genes around to try and combat disease and illness okay um, some other films these are kind of oldies now um, but there are some more contemporary ones as well you can watch but again, Lorenzo's oil is a classic one. Again, autoimmune disease um, is one which is your body attacking itself. And this is a, a brilliantly uh, directed um, film which kind of goes through the process of parents trying their best to um, come up with or trying to encourage doctors to come up with a cure for this really rare disease that their son has. Um, Gorillas in the Mist. <clears throat> Is a brilliant one if you if you think about um, or you're thinking about going out and becoming a research field biologist this will inspire you to do that Sigourney Weaver is is a scientist who goes up and spends time with the gorillas in um, the jungle and it's um, a little bit of a sad story but it is a true uh, story um, and it's brilliant to, to kind of watch and get you kind of wet your appetite for that field work type stuff Andromeda strain I've not seen this um, but again, it was kind of like flicked up as a suggestion. Um, so have a look at this again. Um, it's it's quite um, interesting in the times that we're we're living through at the moment. This idea of an alien microbe, which then starts to uh, kill off the human race. Um, so yeah, not quite the stage that we're at. But again, it's that that um, situation that humans find themselves in, not being able to fight off something which is completely um, alien. Um, and then the last one, something the Lord made. So again, this is great, really pertinent at the moment. A little bit older film now, but again, covers content of, of, of um, racism in, in some respects in terms of research, which again, we're seeing is coming to the forefront of society at the moment. Um, <clears throat> but also um, it's this idea of cutting edge science and, and heart surgery and how it was developed and how um, the, the kind of real brave doctors kind of went through this process of um, coming up with new systems of, of how to perform it okay so that gives you some things to kind of get on with and and have a go at um, I hope I haven't uh, talked too long at you but as I said this would normally be done with some practical work you could get stuck into um, and we'll have plenty of time to do that come September but I hope you have a, a fantastic summer um, thank you for listening um, I hope you choose biology I love it it's a brilliant subject to do it opens so many doors uh, in terms of the way it gets you thinking but also the content um, as well as the phil philosophical side of it as well okay have a great summer and i look forward to seeing you in september bye for now